This is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to venture into the wonderful world of chain mail with a weave called the Yentz Pinned. It's uh, spelled Jens Pinned, but it's pronounced Yentz Pinned. And uh, we're going to learn how to do it. This is considered an advanced weave mainly because you have to work with very, very small AR, very small aspect ratio. But the pattern itself is pretty easy. Um, I'll show you in three different ARs so you can get an idea of how it really goes together and the differences between the ARs. I'll explain what rings to use for the various ARs and in addition to the rings you will need a pair of pliers. I like to use some needle nose pliers for this because you are working with very small rings but it's up to you whatever you want to use. So I've started by closing one jump ring and then I have opened all the jump rings of three different colors. I'm using three different colors so you can see the pattern better. To begin, we will start with one jump ring and to it, one closed jump ring that is, and to it I will go ahead and add a pink ring. Now these are tiny, tiny rings. Well, these are small rings. These are the 3.5 millimeters inside diameter 18 gauge. Okay, so I've got one going in through one. So that's, you know, your average uh, one and one. So I'm going to pick up a blue one and I'm going to slip it through both. So I've got it going through both the gold and the pink. All right, so this is what it looks like. It just um, kind of looks like a flower. This is the beginning. I'm going to take my gold ring, and since it was my first, I'm going to put on a piece of wire. This will tell me what my starting end is, and also it gives me something to hang on to. So I'm just going to twist it a little bit. So this is my start. So my pattern is going to be gold, pink, blue. All right, now we are to the first um, real ring, I guess you could call it, of this setup. The blue ring was the one that was added last. The pink was added before. So I've got a gold that's going to go through both the pink and the blue. So it looks like this. Not much. Now I'm going to pick up a pink, and there's this is where the pattern just starts to really um, starts to really show up. I've got a gold ring, and I wanted to go th my pink ring. I wanted to go through this blue ring and this gold ring because these are the last two that I added. So I'm going to pick up the pink and put it through the gold and the blue. Now I'm doing this in an AR um, aspect ratio that's really, really too big for Yentz Pint, but I want you to see the pattern. And uh, I'll get to uh, the proper aspect ratio, but before I do that, it's easier to see the pattern this way. All right, next one is a blue. And so where do we want to put this blue? We wanted to put it in a place where it's on the jump rings and not on the carpet. Okay, so we know it's going to go through a pink and a yellow. And I want it to go underneath this other blue. So you can see where the other blue the other blue is a little bit on top. Well, you can't see it very well here. And that's because of the aspect ratio being so high. 
Okay, I've got a little bit more done, and you can see that we basically have something that's three-sided. I have a gold side, a pink side, and a blue side. So this is Yen's pint when it's done in an aspect ratio that is like way too big. So it's kind of a, a floppy. Now here's what I mean by the structure. You can see that this ring is laying on top of this ring. This ring is laying on top of this ring. So it's kind of like a slanting upward. And each ring is going to follow the same pattern. Each one is going to be laying on top of its next one in line. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense when I start this one up. But as you can see, the weave is a lot more structured with this a smaller AR. And this is about an AR of almost exactly 3.0. So it's made from Argentium silver. All right. So we have these tiny rings and you can see that this is what they look like. And here I think you can see better what I mean by one laying on top of the other on top of the other. Let's see if we can get that more in focus for you. So one is laying on top of the other on top of the other. So my next ring, so that since this is my last ring, I'm going to turn it a little bit. So my next ring in line was this one. So I need to put my next ring through this one and this one. And let's see if I can point to where it needs to go. So let's see. And sometimes you have to sit and fiddle with this a little bit. Okay. So if I want to keep in the pattern, I need to put my new jump ring through these two rings. And I need to put it in underneath this one. So it has to go in this area right here. Okay, now before you close the ring, do a check. Check to make sure that your ring is going to be consistent for the pattern on both sides. So sometimes when you put it in incorrectly, it'll look correct on one side but not on the other. So do check both sides before you close the jump ring. One thing about Yent's Pint that is a little bit on the difficult side sometimes is it is so easy to get this bound up. One thing I like to do, if I'm working in a slightly larger AR, and this one, like I said, is just about three, I do this. I hold it and I just, you know, let it <laughs> drop, so to speak. If there are any kinks, I know I have to go back right away and work those kinks out. Um, it is a real pain to go ahead and do this beautiful Jens Pint and then find out, you know, like two-thirds of the way down there's a, a, a ring out of place. Okay, here is Jens Pint done in a ratio, an aspect ratio that is just about perfect. This is done in an aspect ratio of 2.9. What I have is 18 gauge enameled copper wire. The inside diameter is three millimeters. But what happens is when you enamel the copper, it adds just a very thin layer um, to, the, or to the diameter of the wire. So in effect, this ends up being like 2.91 um, aspect ratio. All right, so I think you can see a little bit better now what I mean by one laying on top of the other. So you can see that these are in diagonals. And let's take a look at the green. So you can see that they're laying like this. And again, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and just do this. This makes you see that 
that you've got the right, um, that you don't have anything out of line. Because if you had a ring out of line, you'd see a kink all of a sudden. Okay, I have got a kink in here. So I think you can pretty clearly see that this ring is out of pattern. So this one is like straight across instead of slanting up. And this one is straight across. And this one looks like it's trying to slant. But this would, is a very definite kink in the pattern. So let's see how it affects the other rings. So this hasn't been affected too much yet, but you can start seeing that on the end this green is wanting to go ahead and go horizontal. And you can very definitely see on the pink side, you can see that the, the kink has been introduced where now it's starting to slant in the wrong direction. Instead of going like this, now it's trying to go like this. Okay, final set. You can see that again this is the aspect ratio of 3.4 and you can see it's very loose and it doesn't look very structured. Kind of a little on the messy side. Here we have an aspect ratio of about 3 to 3.1 and you can see that it looks much more structured. Um, the links are, are much more solidly together. Now with this, it's still a little bit larger for an aspect ratio than it would be um, for perfect, so to speak. And if you wear this, you'll notice that it has a very subtle spiral on it. You don't really see it so much when you lay it down flat, but when you wear it, it has a very subtle spiral. If you don't want the spiral at all, you're going to go to an aspect ratio of 2.9. And I think, like I said, this one is like 2.91. And this is the 18 gauge 3.0 millimeter diameter, inside diameter, enameled. So, um, anyway, you can see the difference. Now, one more thing. If you're working in an aspect ratio, especially if you're working in this uh, really small aspect ratio, and you know that you're putting in your ring in the correct pattern, but you're having problems getting it in, Sometimes you can just go ahead and wiggle it back and forth. Sometimes you can flip it and try to put it in in pattern from the opposite side. The other thing that you want to work or watch for, I should say, is be careful of how you close your rings. When you're working with an aspect ratio this tight, if you mangle your rings when you close them, you're very easily going to throw this pattern out of whack. So, if you have enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more uh, chain mail videos, please go ahead and put a comment down or give it a like. And that way I know that you would like to see more chain mail. So this is Gail signing out saying have a great day and happy mailing. Bye.